like a, a, a watchman, those who follow our ministry, where they can go and meet together online, sort of like a Facebook for them, those who don't really like Facebook, they can go and meet there. And we have rules in the watchman community. And those rules, I mean, they're rather simple. I, and that watchman community is sort of treated like our church. Uh, you can't join the watchman community and then start criticizing Pastor Mike. You can't do that. You can, if you want to do it somewhere else, be my guest, I welcome it. But you can't do it inside my church. You can't go inside the watchman community and start saying, well, Mike Hoggard's a dog. I don't like him. I don't like his preaching. I think he's wrong. You can't do that. They'll th we'll throw you out. It's a rule. You can't, you can't post stuff using other Bible translations and saying, now, this is a better translation. You can't do that. There's a Facebook community, Mike Hoggard Bethel Church Watchman Group on Facebook. You can ask to join that, and we'll probably let you in. But there are rules. And um, one of the admins of the group posts the rules every now and then just to remind people, hey, there's rules here. And those rules are, if you want to criticize Pastor Mike, go somewhere else and do it. You can't do it here, because this is like his church. You can't do that. And so every, or if you're going to post doctrine or get into doctrinal arguments with people that is contrary to things that I teach, you can't do that. Now, you can do it on Facebook, and I don't mind you doing it. Knock yourself out. You just can't do it in my church. And so I warn people, you're being unruly, and that's my job is to warn you. So when you start getting in your little verbal confrontations with people about Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman, describe for me the facts that you know that have, le that have led you to, to make the judgment that you've made. Show me those facts, not just what you heard from the mainstream media that you say you don't trust. Warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. You know what that means? Some people, let's just be honest, are just not as smart as you are. Comfort them. Support the weak. Maybe there's people out there that have, there are people in our church with all kinds of weaknesses. Maybe one of those weaknesses that some people have is familial honor or racial honor. If you say, I mean, you can't even say anything about black people or Italian people or Jewish people, and they get offended. You're supposed to support them. Be patient toward all, I'm reading scripture, be patient toward all men. And the postings that you've made and the things that you've said in social media and to, and to other people, you're just looking for a fight, Jack. Come on, let's go. And our apostle told us to be patient. And then verse 15. Here we go. Here we go. Everybody listen to this now. This is good for all you geese and all you ganders out there. Black and white. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. That's what it says. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. That means don't be mad at me because I'm reading scripture. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Now here's, here's why I brought that in. If you can't prove your opinion of either Trayvon or Zimmerman, then Pastor Mike's going to tell you to do something. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it bluntly, but with a with a kind and loving spirit. I'm going to tell you to sit down and keep your mouth shut. Sit down, and shut up. Because all you're doing 
is feeding an agenda. It's an agenda that I, I know about, I've been trying to warn people about, I've been trying to tell people this is coming. All you're doing is fueling the fire of an agenda. So your pastor, with as much love and grace as I can put into it, is going to tell you, sit down, shut up. Unless you can prove what you believe about either Trayvon or Zimmerman, keep your mouth shut. James was right. The tongue is probably the most unruly member that we have. And we just it admittedly have a real problem keeping our mouth shut. Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul be, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus. That was our apostle. You know what who he is? He is in authority over us. So if you don't, if you don't like me, and you don't say, so well, you're not my pastor. Your apostle told you to sit down and keep your mouth shut. Anything else that you do is in violation of Scripture, and you are unruly. And I, I mean, you all know what God does to unruly children. Matthew 7, 1. Here we go. Judge not that you be not judged. Luke 6, 37. Judge not. And you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. John seven twenty four. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Now this is an open criticism of President Hussein. You remember um, right into his presidency, there was, a, there was a situation where there was a black university professor that went nuts at his home. And the police arrested him and took him to, took him to jail, took him down to, the, down to the jailhouse. So the news broke. You know, the mainstream media broke the story. Police, white police arrested college university professor dr so-and-so black so president comes out obviously somebody acted stupidly in the police department they arrested a black professor well then the story comes out the real story this guy the police had had oodles of patience with this guy and he went nuts on them and he was disobeying lawful commands from those who are supposed to be keeping order and peace. He was disobeying lawful commands, and they finally got tired of it, and they arrested him. And Obama had to have a beer with the guys and, and halfway apologize about it. Now he comes out, and, um, and, he, and, he's, and he's defending Trayvon Martin. If I had a son, he would look like Trayvon. And he's telling everybody to wear hoodies now. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And I say this openly with no apology whatsoever. Our president has done nothing to keep the racial um, friction from heating up. He's thrown gasoline onto it. He's an angry, angry man for some reason. 1 Corinthians 4, 5, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Did you, as, as soon as we heard about it on the news, you already decided in your mind who was right and who was wrong. 
our whole system of laws and criminal justice is actually based upon this verse, that a person is presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. And it says, therefore, judge nothing before the time. And so this has been a year boiling in everybody and boiling in black and white Christians, boiling in them who had already determined if they were white, George Zimmerman was innocent. He had a reason to shoot this kid. And if you were black, uh, Trayvon was doing nothing wrong. He had Skittles and iced tea and this, this white cracker, whatever that is, this white cracker looking for a black hoodie wearing thug shot him for no reason. You'd already decided that. You already decided that it was racism pure and simple. And we're told in the scriptures, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And, and there is even some, where is this? Where is this article? There are some who have assumed before the verdict ever came out that the fix was in, I can't find it now. Trayvon Martin's dad was in the lodge. And so there was there's people talking, the fix is in. Trayvon Martin's dad's a Freemason. They're gonna they're gonna run right over Zimmerman because he's a Mason. <laughs> Didn't happen. Trayvon Martin's dad, being a Mason, apparently had no bearing on the case whatsoever. May have had something to do with the fact that the judge is a woman and all the jurors were women, which they can't be Masons. So what you've done is that you've judged and you've cast judgment, whether you're black or white, you've cast judgment upon two people that you had no right judging. You, ha you have no right or interest in this whatsoever. It's like you thinking, well, I'm going to sue George Zimmerman now. I'm going to sue him. You know you can't. You know why? You have no interest. There's no cause of action. He hasn't done anything to you. And so, but you've judged him, you've judged Trayvon over what the mainstream media told you to believe, over what somebody on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, what somebody told you to believe, what your family members, because your family members are all white or your family members are all black, they told you, you got to be on our side. And we forgot, we forgot that you and I, as King James Bible believers, we're not supposed to be on their side at all. We're supposed to be together. We're supposed to be one. We're supposed to be brothers and sisters in one faith, in one baptism, in one spirit. And it's kind of like the, the, the hurt that I experienced over being lashed out against by guys that said they were King James Bible believers. And they were lashing out against me 